l'avevo fatto. Scusi, mi ha pranzato. May I have a light? Of course. Thanks. Goodbye. See you tomorrow. Box of Deutschmeister, please. Yes, sir. A box of Deutschmeister, please. Yes, sir. How are you getting on, Alex? I'm no Hoffman, you know. I'm an amateur at this. It takes me time. You are the tubes and the condenser. Can you get it ready for tonight? I'll do my best. Good. Alman, what about the truck? It's in the warehouse. As soon as Alex is finished, we start out. Fine. Keep working. We have to broadcast tonight. Rita, where's Joseph? He went out with some literature this afternoon. Hmm. I need some leaflets. Uh, Willie, how many can you print before nine o'clock? I could do a thousand every half hour. Look! Oh, that's fine, that's fine. Something like this. Um, citizens of Germany, once again the illegal radio will bring you sensational news about the true conditions in Germany. Listen tonight, try your dial, voice of freedom. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening. Yes, Mother. Oh, I'm so glad you're home tonight. I have a surprise for you. Surprise? What is it? Kurt is coming home tonight. Kurt? Tonight? Yes, he's on his way here now. He has a telegram. He's coming with a seven o'clock train from Hanover. Isn't it wonderful? Yes, but I don't understand it. What? Why should he send a soldier home at times like this? Oh, who knows? Maybe they give him a vacation. Oh, yes, of course. But, but you have to hurry if you want to get to the station in time. You have only a few minutes. Excuse me, Frau Franken. Shall I put the sauce on before or after? Before, before. Oh, Ella, I told you so many times. Oh. Café? Who? Just a moment. Still be a telephone. Sylvia, here's Eric. Where? Oh, in a quiet little place in uh, Lichtenberg. I'm sure I can get away. Well, you call the professor. He's coming with us. Tell him I'll be delayed, but let him pick me up at my home about, uh, say, about nine o'clock. Eric, you're still here? Oh, please, please, hurry. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Mama. I have plenty of time. But I have a big dinner waiting. A big dinner? What is it? An ersatz stew? No, a goose. A goose? Yeah. No, I don't believe it. How did you get it? Never mind. I talked to the butcher. I said, you have to give it to me. I don't care what your ration card allows me. My son is a soldier. You can feed him with a piece of shoe leather. You'll give it to me, or I tell the Führer himself. Mm, and I suppose that frightened him. He gave it to me, didn't he? <laughs> now, Harry, please. 1902, train from direction Hanover, arriving on track 3. Train from direction Stendhal, track 6, 50 minutes late. Dietzog from Bremen, due 7.30, not arriving tonight. Troop transport from Norway, arriving track 4. No. Kurt! 
Eric! Hello, Kurt. It's good to see you again. What? What's this? Oh, a home shot, we call it. That's why they have let you come back. Yeah. I'm not much good to them at the front this way. I'm sorry, Kurt. Oh, I was lucky at that. Could have been worse, you know. It won't be pleasant news to the family. I know. That's why I didn't write. I didn't want them to worry sooner than they had to. Hmm. Well, you might as well go now. Uh -huh. Family is waiting. They're all excited. Uh -huh. Mother made a nice dinner for you. Good. Well, how is everyone? Oh, about the same. What are you going to do now? Did he tell you? No, but there'll be a party job of some kind, I suppose. I have to report to headquarters tomorrow. There are still many ways I can be useful to the state. Oh, I'm sure they will find something for you. He's here! Albert! Albert, he's here! The boys are here! I'm coming! Ella! Court is here! I'll be right in! Ah, uh, this tie, it never looks right if I fold it once. The knot is too small if I fold it twice. It's too big. <laughs> Come, I help you. Mother. Cool. Here you are. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. I am so glad to see you. Good. It's nothing, Mother. I was proud to give it. Father? He looks fine, doesn't he, Father? Yes, fine. Picture of health. He has gained at least 10 pounds. 12. Why didn't you tell us, Good? I didn't want to worry you. After all, it's better I come back this way than not at all, isn't it? Mm. Good is right, Mother. There's no time for tears. You should be happy he is here. I am. I am happy. So happy. As long as my family is together, I'll always be happy. You see, that's better. After the Stukas comes the artillery. Then the Panzer divisions move in and the way is clear. I tell you, it would have given you the thrill of your lives to see the way we rolled over them. Denmark, Norway, Belgium, France, one after the other, like a steamroller. Save the coffee grounds, Ella. The Führer is right. We have the greatest military machine ever created. I remember another leader who said it once. Ah, sour grapes, father. You lost your war. We'll win ours. And we get back our colonies and have good coffee again. We need it. My boy, you are young and full of ideals. But believe me, no one ever really wins a war. The whole world loses. No, father. The nation which is right and strong enough to prove it must win. We haven't won yet, Kurt. No, but we will. But how long will it take? And what sacrifices? In six months, wait and see. The please, uh, please, just for tonight, let's forget war, politics, everything but our family. Mother's right. Let's stop. We don't settle anything this way. Maybe. But remember one thing, Kurtz. To be strong doesn't always mean to be right. You see the motto we have? Oh, yes, I remember. You made me learn it when I was a boy. What stronger breastplate than a heart untainted? Thrice is he armed that has his quarrel just. And he but naked, though locked up in steel, whose conscience with injustice is corrupted. Never forget it. Don't worry, I won't. I always wanted to ask you who wrote it. Unfortunately, one of our enemies, an Englishman, Shakespeare. <laughs> Ella, I go. Come now, we'll have some music. Oh, see, that's better. Oh, I haven't touched my violin in months. I'm afraid I'm out of practice too. Yes. What should you be out of practice? What have you been doing? Oh, many things. I was quite busy. Uh-huh. Tell me, Mother, has Eric been a good boy since I've been away? Oh, Eric, <laughs> every night is out until 12, 1 o'clock. Oh, no. excuse me, Doctor. It's a Miller. Ask him to come in. Come in, Miller. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening, Gustav. Come in, my friend. Come in, my Good evening, Herr Müller. Good evening, Herr Müller. Good evening. Good evening. I'm sorry to disturb you, but I didn't want to call you out into the night. Nonsense! What can I do for you? It's my wife. Maybe you can give her something to help her sleep. Of course! You remember my son Kurt, don't you? He just came home tonight. How are you, Herr Müller? I'm glad to see you. Oh. I'm sorry. It's good to have him back, isn't it? We are very grateful. 
But don't let them take him away again. Keep him here. Lock your doors. Even if the Fira himself comes, don't let them take him away. He's your son. No one has a right to take him from you. No one. No one. Herr Müller, what is it? Sit down. What's the matter? My son, Carl. I've got this letter. It is our duty to inform you that your son, Carl Müller, died on the battleship Bismarck, defending his fatherland. Heil Hitler. Well, we're at war, Herr Müller. Yes, we are at war. But can you tell me why? Of course, to restore Germany's place in the world. We were a weak and despised nation before. Now everyone respects us. They're afraid of us. I must remember this. They are afraid of us. I will tell my wife it will comfort her. Perhaps she won't need any medicine to sleep. Yes, I will put a sign over my son's grave. They are afraid of us. This will make him happy. This will take his place in our hearts. Herr Müller, please. I'm surprised at you, Herr Müller. Karl died for a great cause. This is a great cause. I say it's a great lie. I won't listen to you, Herr Müller. You're a traitor to your son and an enemy of the state. Gott, please. Herr Müller and I fought side by side until the last war. He loves his fatherland as much as you do. Then let him show it. Come, Gustav. I give you the medicine. Excuse me, please. I did not mean to make trouble for you. But I have lost my two brothers in the last war. And now my son. It seems to me one war in a man's life is enough. I've spoiled your evening, haven't I, Mother? Herr Müller's an old friend, Kurt. I know. Frau Franken, excuse me. It's a stormtrooper for the Winter Relief Fund. Excuse me. Left hand was never too good. Well, I'll go upstairs. Good night. Eric, you're not going to bed. It's early. Not even nine o'clock. I'm afraid I'll have to. I have a hard day's work ahead of me. But this is no way to treat a hero on his first night home. I thought we might go out later and make a night of it. Have some fun. No, not me. You can sleep in the morning, Cousin Ovo, but I have an 8 o'clock appointment with a couple of test tubes. Oh, let them wait. Yeah, that's easier said than done. You don't know how important my work at the moment is. Ersatz. That's very interesting, but it doesn't do me any good. You forget there's a war going on. What happens on the home front is just as important as the rest. Yes, but why stay home tonight? Mother says you're out every night. Oh, Mother, I know. You know her. Maybe once or twice I was out late, so right away I'm a night owl. <laughs> Well, if you're going to stay in, perhaps you'd give me a telephone number. Now, listen, Kurt, I'm a chemist, not a matrimonial agent. Who said anything about getting married? All I want is a telephone number. <laughs> hmm. Who's Sylvia? Sylvia? Oh, some silly girl. Nothing for you. Giggles all the time. And... Oh. Talks a lot, too, I suppose. Yes, yeah, she never stops. Sounds like a lot of fun. Just the kind I like. No, not this one. I'll tell you what we'll do. You get yourself settled, rest up for a day or two, and then I'll arrange something over the weekend. Hmm? All right. Make mine a blonde. 
blonde, huh? Oh, you haven't changed a bit, you No. <laughs> well, I might as well go in and unpack. Yeah, why don't you? Eric, it's good to be home. It's good to have you back. Good night. I'm sorry I'm late. Anything wrong? No, my brother came home unexpected. Let's go. Why did you want me to come along? Looks better to have a girl with us, less suspicious. on the radio. Check the reception. Tell me if anything goes wrong. Hello. You been waiting long? No, we just came here. Everything all right? Oh, sure. We'd have been here ahead of you, but we ran into a motorized division and had to cheer for 15 minutes. Why don't you stay here? The same old excuse, the professor's car broke down. fellow citizens. This is the voice of the illegal radio to which you are forbidden to listen on a penalty of death. Tonight we come to you again in spite of the Gestapo with the news of the real conditions inside of Germany. And we take courage in knowing that thousands of you are willing to risk your lives in order to hear the only words of truth spoken in our unhappy and desecrated country today. And yet, how else can you know the truth? You are forbidden to listen to any foreign news broadcasts. You are not allowed to read any newspaper or publication except those owned by the government or censored by Dr. Goebbels himself. You cannot even speak safely to your friends on the street without being reported. So they call us traitors because we bring you the truth and because we in the underground dare to raise our voices in protest against the party and That's against enough. this needless yes. brutal war. Speaking. Contact all police cars. Try to locate position of illegal radio. Hurry. Captain Werner? When the invasion of Holland took place, Field Marshal Goering sent 500 of his bombers over the city of Rotterdam. Call police to Dan Schuster. Have his men turn every house upside down if necessary. Search every car. Yes, sir. Have my car waiting. I'll be in the radio room. Yes, sir. 45,000 human beings wiped out in a city which was defenseless and which had no military objectives. Car number seven, illegal radio broadcasting, seven and a half meters, take bearing, fall back. Well, what do you find? Indications district 41. Car 21 reports 43 degrees from their position. Car 41, 43 degrees. Wives and mothers were ordered to tell their sorrows to the Führer himself and not to write of the hardships to their husbands at the front. Defy this order. Car number seven, proceed now, west of the direction, report back. Colonel Heller. Yes? Pete Marshal Goering's office calling. Harry, we must find them. Mothers, write your sons. Wives, write your husbands. Get word to them that you and your children are receiving less food each day. Yes, sir. We are trying to locate their position now. But General, with only synthetic voice to trade, it's very difficult. They are using a microphone which changes the quality of the voice and makes it unrecognizable. Yes, sir. I'm doing my best, sir. We found them. They are operating from Lichtenberg. Good. Tell them to interfere with the frequency. Yes, sir. Fräulein Gessner, call police to General Schuster. Tell him to proceed with his men to the Lichtenberg district. Yes, sir. Come. Long and terrible war. And yet... Hello? Hello, Paul. It's time for you to go now. All right. No, Harry, put down... Fräulein Gessner, the Gestapo just left. Let me go away. Time and again, the Führer has proclaimed to the world that the German people stand united behind him. But even among our leaders, there is no unity. Recently, all of Germany was shocked to hear that Rudolf Hess, the third-ranking leader of the Nazi party, had flown to England, that he gave himself up to our enemies. Why? We of the underground have been trying to tell you for the last eight years that the Nazi high command is rotten to the core. But you ask, why did he go to England? He went to England because that is the only place in Europe where the Gestapo can't stop him from talking and can't keep him from telling the truth. We too shall soon know what hunger and starvation means. 
He's in good form tonight, isn't he? He won't be in such good form when we get through with him. Trick, they've located your position. You've got to get out of here. Things the Fuhrer promised us never would occur. Paul is here. We've got to leave at once. I'm sorry, my friends. We must leave you now, but keep listening. Faster. We'll broadcast from another section of the city. Harry! I'll drive, Professor. No, she won't start. Keep on trying. You'd better go on. I don't know what's the matter with it. Don't be a fool. Leave it here. Come on, both of you. Wait. I'll give them something to light their way. Wonderful radio. He'll build another one. Well, uh, Helmut? Yes, Herr Maxel. Where did you disappear to? I'm sorry, Herr Maxel, but a friend of mine suddenly became ill and I had to leave. But I told the head waiter about it. All right, but please don't go away again. No, sir. There's a young man waiting to see you. He's been here quite some time. Soldier. Who is it? I don't know. Better see what he wants. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, good evening. You're Sylvia? Yes. Well. Oh, won't you sit down? I'm sorry, sir, but I've got to play now. Play? The violin. Oh, oh you play the violin here. Well, won't you sit down anyway, just for a moment? I'd like to talk to you. Well, uh, just for a moment. Well, this is even better than I expected. What did you wish to talk to me about? Oh, uh, oh, yes. I, I wanted to ask you, where's Eric? Eric? <laughs> I don't know any Eric. Now, now, you don't have to lie to me. You see, I'm his brother. Oh, you mean Eric Franken. That's right. I'm very happy to know you. Thank you. But tell me, really, haven't you seen Eric tonight? No. That's strange. He slipped out of the house this evening after he told me he was going to bed. I was sure he was here. Oh, but why should you expect to find him here? Well, I... I saw your name on a card he was carrying and... Well, I just thought he'd be here. No, he isn't. And after all, I'm sure Eric has got many friends and I'm not the only girl he knows. Then there's nothing serious between you two? Of course not. You must be crazy. What? Well, I mean, I'm glad to hear it. It makes things easier. Well, if you excuse me, Herr Franken, I've really got to get to work now. All right, I can wait. <laughs> it won't do you any good. Are downstairs. Let them wait. Yes, sir. Oh, I send the order through to post the official notices all over the city. Good. It's in the papers, too. Yes. Quite an ingenious idea to have a man lying on his back facing the axe. Do you think so? Yes. Whose idea was it? I tell you the truth. It was actually mine. But I told Hella about it when he tried to take the cutting. But he was fooled. He told Himmler about it and how Himmler is taking the credit. By the way, did you hear there is a rumor going about that Phil Marshall Goering and Dr. Goebbels have two million marks each deposited in a foreign bank? 
Two million? Who told you this? It's a rumor. Do you suppose it's true? How should I know? Well, I just wanted you to know. Don't tell anyone I told you this. Otherwise, I'll never tell you anything again. Sure, sure. Schleifer, not here yet? Yes, sir. Well, send them in. Yes, sir. What's this? Where did it come from? Thousands of them were found floating over the city early this morning. They were stuffed into a smokestack in the factory district during the night. This morning, when the firemen opened the flue, they were scattered into the sky. Uh, excuse me, Colonel Heller. Yes? Did you hear that uh, Field Marshal Goering and uh, Dr. Goebbels have five million marks each deposited in a foreign bank? That's ridiculous. Who told you this? Well, uh, it's a rumor. Do you think it's true? Of course not. Five million marks. Hein Hitler. Hein Hitler. Well, did you examine the truck? Yes, sir. What was left of it. But we could not find a single clue. The license number was a fake, so was the address of the garage. Were there no other identifying marks on the truck? If there were, the explosion destroyed them. What about the radio equipment? What about it, sir? To broadcast, one must have materials, no? Wires, tubes, transformers, batteries. Yes, sir, of course, sir. And to get such materials, one must buy them someplace, no? No. Yes. Then perhaps if you idiots would find out where it was bought, you could also find out who bought it. Get busy and report back here tonight. Yes, sir. Hi, hi, little. I've got to find those vermin. Well, maybe if you didn't make it so difficult for them, they would try to build another radio, and we could try again to catch them. Oh, shut up, you're a fool. Yes, sir. Wait. Maybe you aren't such a fool. I'll fix it for them. Get me the concentration camp at Orangenburg. Yes. Oh, hi, Hitler, Colonel Hiller. Who? Hoffman, just a moment. Get me the carton boy to Hoffman. Yes, sir. Oh, I see. That's a very good idea, Colonel Heller. Walter Hoffman, radio technician, member of the underground, suspected of being connected with the illegal radio, sent you from the concentration camp at Dachau, April 18th, 1940. I think he's had enough. He's been confined in a dark cell for the last three months. Yes, sir. We'll have him in Berlin in an hour. Heil Hitler, bring Hoffman in. Yes, sir. Walter Hoffmann. Hoffman, how would you like to get out of here? Get out? Yes. Wouldn't you like that? <laughs> get him his clothes. Take him to the office of Colonel Heller, Wilhelmstrasse. Colonel Heller? Yes, he wants to talk to you. If you'll do as he asks, you can be a free man again. Hurry up. Yeah, it's my Next, we hear from Eric Franklin. Well, friends, as you all know, we not only lost our truck, but also our radio equipment. That means, of course, we have to build another one, and that as quickly as possible. So each of you will receive orders at various times, uh, telling you exactly the place where to buy the new materials. Excuse me, Eric. Yes, Fräulein? But this morning, the Gestapo issued orders that no one will be allowed to buy any radio equipment without first giving their name, address, or without an investigation. So you must all be very careful. Well, that means that you have to smuggle it into the city or collect it secretly. 
friends, we have good news. One of our former members, Walter Hoffman, has just been released from the concentration camp at Oranienburg. Oh, sure. A friend in Panko called to tell me that he wants to rejoin us. Excellent. That's really good news. With Hoffman back, we can build a new radio in no time. He was one of the most able radio engineers in the country. This is a stroke of luck. Let's bring him here at once. Hoffman can build a radio out of wire and two spears. He's a genius. Oh, wire, please. There's no doubt this news comes at a most opportune moment. Are the members in favor of telling Hoffman where we are and taking him back with us? Those in favor, raise their hands. Professor, you object? I don't object, only I think it would be wiser if we talked to Hoffman before we took him back. You don't distrust him, do you? I don't distrust the Hoffman who worked in the underground before he was caught, but I'm not so sure of the Hoffman who has been tortured for two years in a concentration camp. Any man who's been through that experience must be looked upon with doubt. Oh, I'd stake my life on Hoffman. That's exactly what we may be doing. If Hoffman was going to betray us, he'd have done so long ago. Eric, what do you think? Yes. Well, the only risk is, of course, that he might be followed. But he is too old to hand to let it happen. We must remember this. Hoffman has endured the living hell for the sake of the same things in which we all believe. So it seems to me we owe him something besides distrust. Then it seems agreed that the members wish to take Hoffman back. Yes. But we shall talk to him first before bringing him here. So I suggest Joseph contact Hoffman immediately after the meeting is over and the Central Committee will see him tonight in Maxwell's Café. Yes. Papers, der Abend. Papers, der Abend. Nachtausgabe. Hi, little professor. Oh, hi, Hitler, Eric. Hi, little. Hi, Alex. Sit down. This is a pleasant surprise. We're just in time for a game of chess. May I take your orders, gentlemen? Yes, what do you have, gentlemen? Uh, for me, coffee. Coffee? Beer. Beer. How is the coffee tonight? Very good. Then I'll have some, too. Thank you. Did you, uh, did you phone Hoffman? No, I was waiting for you, too. Joseph is going to call him. All right. These are the papers in the Kleinschmidt case. The Kleinschmidt case is closed. He conveniently killed himself, didn't he? Yes. Yes? Put him on. It's Hoffman. Hello? Hoffman? Yes? He just called me, the Central Committee of the Underground. They are waiting at Maxwell's Bavarian Café. Maxwell's Bavarian Café. Say it again. Have you got their names? I told you. I don't know their names. The committee has changed. Never mind. Get there as fast as you can. Walk in and sit down with them. That's all you have to do. But, Colonel Heller, I would rather not do that. Now, listen to me, my friend. Your preferences don't interest me. You obey orders or find yourself back in Orangenburg. Now, which do you want? Good. Now you're talking like a sensible man. Do as I tell you and we'll do the rest. It makes a man a little dizzy. What is it, sir? Having the Central Committee of the Underground in the palm of my hand. Come on. Shouldn't he be here already? Oh, yes. He only lives a few blocks away. I don't like it. We'll give him five more minutes. If he isn't here, then we had better go. Hello? Maxwell's Cafe? I want to speak to Professor Baumer, please. I'm sorry I didn't get the name. Professor who? Yes, sir. He wants complete information not later than tomorrow on both cases. What? That's it. Thank you. Say, are you drunk or crazy? I'm too busy for jokes. Goodbye. Oh, good evening, Major. Is there anything I can do for you? Yes, I have an appointment with Colonel Heller. Is he in? No, sir. He just left. Are you expecting him back soon? Not right away. Well, I'm in a hurry. I'll wait. Yes, sir. 
Hail Hitler. What a relief. What a relief. Hail Hitler. Hail Hitler. Hail Hitler. What is it, Eric? My brother Kurt. Hello. Oh, hello, Kurt. Well, they have nice music here, don't they? I didn't notice particularly. No? Oh, uh, these are my friends. Alex Schumann, Professor Baum, and my brother Kurt. And uh, Hitler, gentlemen. Hi, Hitler. Hitler. Won't you uh, sit down and join us? Thank you. You know, it's odd how my brother misses so many of the finer things of life, such as music, isn't it? What do you mean? What do I mean? <laughs> oh, the girl. Sylvia. Yes, yeah, Sylvia. <laughs> <laughs> papers are went nach Tauskabe. Papers are. You four go in, sit down and wait for Hoffman. The rest of you stay here with me. Go on. Yes, sir. Papers Abend, Nacht aus Kabe. Papers Abend, Nacht aus Kabe. Table, gentlemen? Yes. This way, please. Papers, Papers, der Abend, Nacht aus Kabe. Papers, der Abend, Nacht aus Kabe. Papers, der Abend. How many times did I tell you not to come in here? Get out! Get out! Papers! They're having not so scary! Papers! Anything else? Get startled. Go up the stairway, turn to your right. There's a door leading to the roof. Hurry up. Thank you. Do you think Hoffman told him? Who else? Trader, you'd better go. No, I won't. Not without you. Please. No. Both of you go. Feeling a little tired too. I'm so glad you got away. Are you? Yes, sir. You don't believe me, do you? We didn't all get away. Joseph was killed. That's all I wanted. Wanted to get outside. 
Just once. See the world outside. My friends. And a glass of wine. See a woman's face. You can't understand that, can you? But you came here to kill me. It's not our safety we are thinking of, Hoffman. Our lives don't count. But nothing must interfere with our work. Nothing. But me. You're my friends. You can't. Even if it were my own brother, Hoffman, I would do it. No. You can't. A man is made of flesh and blood, with feelings and nerves. You don't know what they do to you. Things that men have never thought of before. The pain is so great, you think you'll die. But nature comes to your rescue. The body becomes numb, and you don't feel their beatings anymore. They offer you bribes, promise anything. If you will just give the names and addresses. I didn't have to stay in that hell for two years. I could have told them what they wanted and gotten out. But I kept thinking, this can't last. My friends are working. Throughout Germany, thousands of members of the underground are working. And I'm protecting them. That's what kept me alive. But at last, something happens to your mind. You lose all power of thought. The strength of making any decision leaves you. And <laughs> you're not responsible anymore. I haven't betrayed you. You must believe me. You must tell the others that the Hoffman they knew was never a traitor. You must tell them that. I can tell them. But you are the only one who can make them believe it. You have to do it yourself. Waiting for you? Well, but how did you know I was here? Oh, I have ways and means, means and ways. You're not a member of the Gestapo by any chance, are you? Well, in a way, <laughs> I'm my own Gestapo, and very efficient, too. Anything I can do for you? Yes. You might see if I could be left alone. Oh, I'm not that kind of a Gestapo. <laughs> oh, you can laugh. It isn't possible. I can't believe it. I must be dreaming. Oh, I can't be as bad as all that. You're worse. You're self-reliant, aloof, mysterious. Mysterious? Yes. Do you realize I know nothing about you except you play the violin at Maxwell's Cafe and live at 17 Schiller Street? Well, what else would you like to know? A great deal. Who you are, where you come from, what kind of books you read, what kind of candy you like. Those things are very important. Well, what I mean is, here I am falling in love with you, and for all I know, you might be a dangerous woman. Me? Dangerous? Why do you say that? Well, that's what Eric thinks. Oh, I see. You want a cat? Please. 
Taxi! Where do you want to go? W station. Where are you going? With you. Oh, please, Court, don't be exasperating. I'm only going to the station to pick up a bag. A very boring errand. Then I'll be an errand boy, and it won't be boring. Please, Court. Bellevue Station. Send two men. Colonel Harris orders. Hurry! It looks like we are going to make some important arrest in connection with the illegal radio. Really? What is it? I just found out we are going to pick up some radio equipment that was checked at the Bellevue Station. You will see, this is the beginning of the end of the underground. Congratulations. I hope this means a promotion for you. Sure. Why not? Hello? Hello, Professor? Fräulein Gessner. I understand. Thank you, Fräulein. My bag. 112, 112. Same number. That's your bag, all right, Fräulein. But it isn't. Can't you see it's obviously a man's? We go by numbers here. That's the bag you must have left. But surely the lady knows whether it's hers or not. Does she? What's the trouble? Oh, are you in charge here? Yes, you might say so. This idiot here keeps insisting on giving me a suitcase that doesn't belong to me. I left an overnight bag here. Open the bag, Carl. Let's have a look at the lady's overnight things. Yes, sir. They are very pretty things, too. We have seen them already. Oh, but what has all this got to do with me? Yes, what is this? Who are you? I'll talk to you later. Look there. I suppose you never saw that stuff before. Of course not. What is it? Radio equipment. Well, what's so horrible about that? You still claim it isn't yours? Of course I do, since it isn't. Why are you asking me all these questions? I don't know who this belongs to, but I do know that I have a bag of my own here and I want it. I'll see the station master. Wait, you come with me. Keep your hands off. Where did you say you met this girl? In a cafe. What cafe? I told you, Marxel's Bavarian Cafe. What were you doing there? Having a cup of coffee. How did you happen to meet her? She plays the violin there. What else do you know about her? Nothing. You're lying. I'm not lying. Why should I lie to you? Did you know there was a meeting of the underground at Maxwell's? No, but I found out about it afterwards. Doesn't seem strange to you that she should work in the very same place the underground meets? No. What about that bag of radio equipment? She said it wasn't hers, didn't she? Why are you trying to protect her? I'm not trying to protect her. I don't think she's guilty, that's all. She said the bag wasn't hers the moment she laid eyes on it. How many times have you been to this cafe? Twice. Did she ever mention a man named Hoffman? No. Tell me the truth, Frank, and I'll make you wish you had died at the front. You have no right to speak to me this way, Colonel Heller. I'm a loyal member of the party and a soldier. Never mind, Franken. I'll soon find out about you. Yes? The head director of the Chemical Institute is here. Send him in. Yes, sir. Will you come in, please? Heil Hitler. I'll excuse me, Colonel Heller, but the importance of my work doesn't allow me to stay away too long. I'm sorry, Herr Director, but we never intended to involve you in this. I understand, of course. Now, this is Eric Franken. He's one of the best men in my department. If he vouches for his brother, you can be sure I'm afraid the case is more serious than you think. This boy was arrested in the company of a girl who is unquestionably a member of the underground. But I tell you, she's not. Why don't you keep quiet when your superiors are talking? Not only is she a member of the underground, but we have reason to believe that she is definitely connected with the illegal radio. This is a serious charge. And if he's withholding any information... That's ridiculous. If I knew anything, I'd tell you. How can you think that I'd ever help a group of rotten, lying traitors? I'd stop them myself if I knew. He's telling the truth. I'm sure he is. I know the Frankens. They are the salt of the earth. Yes? What did you find out? 
Thank you. You're fortunate, your record is good. The War Department assures me that you're completely reliable. But I suggest that in the future you'll be a little more careful about picking up young women in cafes. Oh, boys will be boys. Thank you very much, Colonel Heller. Hi, Hitler. I have to hurry back. You may go. Hello? Send the girl in. Well, what are you waiting for? May I ask what you intend to do with her? I'm afraid you'll have to let us worry about that. Yes, sir. Just a moment, Herr Franken. Keep yourself available. I may want to ask you some more questions later on. Yes, sir. That's all. Hi, Hitler. Hitler. What do you think they'll do with her? What they usually do in a case like this? They wouldn't hurt her. Not a girl, would they? Why not? Oh, uh, uh, by the way, did you mention my name at all in connection with her? No, of course not. Why should I drag you into it? Well, I'm glad you didn't. It might complicate matters. You better go home now. I'll try to talk to one of the clerks. He is an old friend of mine. I'll find out something. Good. I'm sorry to have caused you this trouble, Eric. It was nothing. If I were you, I wouldn't mention this all to uh, father or mother. Might worry them. I won't. See you later. Goodbye. Now look here, Fräulein. It isn't very pleasant to have to beat a pretty girl like yourself, but I have a duty to perform. Raise your head, please. Did you hear me? Now, Fräulein, why don't you save yourself and all of us a lot of trouble by telling us the truth? I... I have told you the truth. You'll see. Now, once again, who gave you the claim check for the bag? No one. Who left it in the station for you? I told you. I checked it there myself, but not the bag they gave me. Where were you going? I wasn't going anywhere. I had been in the country for a weekend. And it was convenient for me to leave it there. It's also a very convenient story. Now tell me, who is the leader of the underground? I don't know. Who killed Hoffman? I don't know any Hoffman. Did you know he was to meet the underground committee in Maxwell's Cafe? No. Who printed these leaflets? I don't know. You play the violin for a living, don't you? Yes, sir. How would you like to have your fingers broken, one by one? You can do what you like. I have nothing to tell you. You are lying. You're trying to save your friends. Don't you realize they wouldn't take this punishment for you? Don't you know they wouldn't extend themselves one inch to protect you? Tell me who they are. I want names and addresses. Now speak up, Fräulein, or I promise you, you won't leave this place alive. Well? Well, perhaps you are right, Florian. It's quite possible you made a mistake. You may be telling me the truth. Anyway, I'm going to release you. I can go? Yes. Sign this. What is it? You have been treated fairly here, haven't you? Yes, sir. Has anyone hurt you? No, sir. Then sign it. All right. Take her home. Why are you letting her go? Why not? She's no good to me as a corpse. Not yet. I have a better idea.
they done to you? What is it? It's from oh. Helmuth. Help me, please. No, I don't want to hear. Please keep her away. The police were here all day. They asked me all kinds of questions. I don't want to hear. What's I the matter with you? Can't you see she's hurt? Oh, oh I'm sorry. I... I'll help you. Come on, you upstairs. Sylvia. They let her go? I thought I asked you to stay home. Why do you persist in following her? I'm sorry, Eric. I had to see what happened to her. Did they uh, beat her? It was horrible. If you remember, I warned you against having anything to do with her. I was suspicious of her. You don't think she's guilty, do you? Do you? No, I don't. Sylvia, a traitor. It's impossible. But suppose it is true. I hope not. You are really concerned about her? I'm afraid so, Eric. But you've only known her for, for a short time. Did you ever know that to make a difference when you really care for someone? Of course, you mustn't see her again. You might get in trouble. It's for your own sake. Think it over. Hello? Yes? It's for you, Kurt. Just a moment, please. Yes? Herr Funken, this is Colonel Heller's aide. He wants to see you in his office tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock without fail. Yes, sir. Karl Hitler. Who was that? Colonel Heller's office. He wants to see me tomorrow morning. Let's get some sleep. Free yourselves from the slavery of the war party. Last night, thousands of these were pasted all over the city against buildings and store windows and the parks. Look at this booklet, slipped into a package of tea. Citizens of Germany rise up against the bandits of the Third Reich. Here, another one, slipped into some advertising matter. They even found a way to manufacture phonograph records musical classics, and sold them for next to nothing in the streets. A few bars of music, and then suddenly a speech against the Fuhrer and his policies. You have no idea to what length they go to undermine the party. And worst of all is this illegal radio. It's like a disease. We stamp it out in one spot, and it appears in another. What is it you want me to do? Give us some clue to this whole business. There must be something that girl said. Some word she dropped inadvertently that would lead us to the underground. Colonel Heller, I'm sure she has no part in it. I'm sure you're mistaken. You are quite certain of her, aren't you? Yes, I am. Would you be willing to put your belief in her to a test? Why, of course. And if you found you were mistaken, that she is a member of the underground, what then? Boy. Why, I denounce her naturally. What else could I do? Good. We could do nothing with that girl, absolutely nothing. And yet we are positive that she is guilty. But you are the only one who can help us prove it. How do you mean? I want you to see this girl. Talk to her, take her out, uh, become friendly with her, if necessary, even make love to her. But win her confidence and find out everything you can about her. I'd rather not do a thing like that. It hardly seems fair. My dear Herr Franken, if I concern myself with problems of ethics, I'll soon be out of a job. Now look here. You served the state well in the past. I'm asking you now to serve again. But Colonel Heller... It's your duty, Herr Franken. And there is another consideration. If the girl is innocent, you'll not only be helping us, but you'll be doing her a favor. I see. Perhaps you're right. Good. Now, you'll report to me every day, no matter how insignificant. But she must not suspect that she's under observation. Yes, sir. 
Oh, excuse me, Colonel Heller. That's all right. Come in. We are finished. Well, I expect to hear from you. Yes, sir. Heil Hitler. The paper's on the Schiller case, sir. Thank you. You know, Frau Gessner, I sometimes wonder if the party appreciates all my efforts in this job. I'm sure that whatever you do, sir, is appreciated. I wonder. Did you hear that Field Marshal Göring and Dr. Goebbels have 10 million marks each deposited in a foreign bank? 10 million marks? Who told you this, sir? It's a rumor, but from a very reliable source. Now, don't mention this to anyone else, or I won't be able to tell you anything again. No, sir. So I started in to study chemistry along with Eric. But in my first experiment, I nearly blew up the laboratory. So you decided to give it up? No, my teacher decided for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a beautiful night, isn't it? Yes, it's a lovely night for an air raid. Oh, how can you say such things? Well, I suppose that's what the war does to you. Even the moon and the stars take on a different meaning in times like these. I was thinking those same stars are shining down at Hildesheim. Ever been there? Yes, once. A long time ago, when I was about ten. We'll go there sometime. Would you like that? I'd love it. Well, thanks for bringing me home. Does that mean you're saying good night? I'm afraid so. Sylvia, there's been something I've been wanting to talk to you about. Do you mind if I come in for a few minutes? I'd rather you didn't, Kurt. You've been very sweet to me these past few weeks, but I don't think we should see each other too often. Why? What are you afraid of? I'm not afraid of anything. I've caused you so much trouble already. Please. Between your trying to keep me away and Eric advising me not to see you, I don't have much chance. Good. Look. The Gestapo. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Let me come in for a little while. It's important. All right. Are they still there? No, they're gone. Sylvia. Yes, Kurt? This isn't the first time you've been followed. It's been going on for weeks, ever since the day you were arrested. They've been watching you, and so have I. You could? Yes, I've been reporting to Heller every day. I know it seems like a terrible thing to do, but I thought it might help clear up matters. I knew you weren't guilty. Did you tell Heller that? Yes, a dozen times, but he refuses to believe me. He still thinks you're a member of the underground. And as long as he does, believe me, your life here won't be worth living. I'm afraid there isn't much I can do about it, Kurt. Yes, there is. You've got to get away. Get away? But where? One can't run away from the Gestapo. You know that, Kurt. But here, they'll be able to arrest you again, throw you into a concentration camp. Sylvia, let me take you away. I know I'm a pretty ordinary fellow, but if I had you... Well, I know a place in Westphalia where I can get a little farm. Please, Kurt. You mustn't talk to me like this. Why shouldn't I? I love you very much, you know that, don't you? But, Kurt, it could never work out. Why not? Is there someone else? Let's discuss it some other day. Please. All right. Come on. I'll make some coffee. What's that old saying? Try my coffee and you never try any other. I'll take a chance. After all, my grandfather was the first man in Saxony who ever dared eat a tomato. He must have been a man after Bismarck's own heart. He was. He was one of his generals. Oh, excuse me. I see who it is. Just put this away. What is it? Pass for the transmitter. You shouldn't have come here. It's dangerous. Uh, never mind. No one saw me. The police are watching the cellar. There's no other place to leave it. Give it to Alex. They'll pick you up later. Good. Good. Wait. Let 
Let me explain. Court! leaving the house. What's the matter? Eric, he knows. What? Yes, he was here when Ernst came. Eric, what are you going to do? Whatever I have to do. You stay here. Hello, Mother. Hello, son. It's, uh... Is Kurt home? Yes, he's in his room. Eric, what's the matter with him? I don't know. Why? He looks so worried. I tried to talk to him, but I couldn't. Why don't you go in and see him? I will, Mother. Uh, where are you going? To see Frau Miller. The Gestapo came today. They took Herr Miller away. What? I'm afraid they will take him to the concentration camp. Someone told them he was talking against the government. Kurt? He says no. Go in and talk to him. Don't worry, Mother. Good night. Good night. Talked to his mother. She told me the Gestapo took her Miller away. Do you know anything about it? No, Eric, I don't. What's the matter? Anything wrong? Everything. Something to do with with Sylvia? She is a member of the underground, Eric. I found out tonight. Are you sure of it? Yes. I begged you not to see her again. Why did you do it? I couldn't help myself, Eric. What do you mean you couldn't help yourself? Don't ask me to explain. I can't. Perhaps I can explain it to you. Ella wanted you to spy on her, didn't he? Yes, he did. I didn't want to do it, but he forced me to. That's what I thought. Now that you know, you're going to tell him? I don't know what to do. You realize, of course, what will happen to her if you do. Yes. Well? Eric, I can't do it. I can't report her. I just can't. Why not? You're a member of the party, aren't you? You don't understand. They'll kill her. You can't do that to someone you love. Still, there might be circumstances when it is justified if you believe in something strong enough. Oh, I know you're right. I know the underground is stirring up the whole country against the party that fills the air with lies about us, that it must be stopped. I know I should report her, but I can't. I suppose that makes me a traitor. A traitor to my leader, my party, and my country. That's what you're thinking, isn't it? at all. I think you're just a human being, the way most of us are. That's all. Good. You must see her again. But Eric, I've got to get her out of it. No. I'm afraid for you. You have the most dangerous kind of information. If the underground found out you knew about Sylvia and he thought you would tell, he would kill you. 
secret. You've got to promise me never to see her again. Not even to think of her. It's not so easy, Eric. I know, but sometimes you have to do the hard things in life as well as the easy things. When time comes, I know it better than you do. Come on. Try to get some sleep. Forget all about it. Good night. Good night. Eric. Yeah. I don't have to tell you, but you've always been more than just a brother to me. I understand. Good night. Good night. news for me? No, sir, I haven't. But you saw her tonight, didn't you? Yes, sir, but I... I'm sorry, I have nothing to report. That's too bad. We picked up a message a few hours ago that leads us to believe that they're going to broadcast tonight. So we must do something immediately. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Come in to see me tomorrow. I may have some news for you. Yes, sir. I'll have luck. Ask questions, you know what to say. If there's any trouble, blow the horn twice. Hello, please. It's very important. Yes? Just a moment. Colonel Hella. Your phone. Who is it? The Falcon. Yes? What? Good. Good. Right away. It's the underground. We've got them. All of the cars. Quickly. Get me Captain Rona. Hurry up. What are you doing? Be quiet. Cruz, have you lost your mind? You can't do this. Take me back. No, you're through with those people. You'll never see them again. You don't know what you're doing. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm not going to let you go on working with those traitors. Take me back and I'll do anything you want me to do. You'll only take me back. Have you arrested with the others? Arrested? Yes. I phoned Hella and told him where they're broadcasting from. His men are on the way to the waterfront right now. Good. What have you done? You know whom the Gestapo is going to find on that boat? Your own brother. 
Eric. Eric. Yes, it's Eric who's doing the broadcasting. You're lying. No, I'm not lying. You've got to believe me. Eric isn't there. I left him at home. But he is there. He's there with the others. You've got to believe me. Listen. Listen closely. The Fuhrer has told us that this is a just war. A war for defense. Let us not be deceived into believing that he is concerned with bringing about justice or peace in Europe. In the past, from all over the world, people of all professions came to study with our masters. We were a spiritual light on a dark planet. That's but not Eric's voice. But it world, is. Listen. So, but they have set us against each other. Brother against brother. Father against son. Look out, Professor! The police! Eric! Police! What's the matter? Up, put up your hands! What aspect of what they're going to do to them? Why didn't he tell me? If I'd only known. They'll get the whole crowd on eight and see. I heard one of them was wounded. His own brother. You can't be teller, can you? A magnificent job. This will put a finish to the underground. Where's Colonel Heller? I must see him at once. I'm caught Franken. Colonel Heller is busy at the moment, examining your brother. What about my father? Where's he? What have they done with him? He too is being examined. But he's innocent. They have no right to arrest him. He's done nothing. You can explain that to Colonel Heller. You may come into his office. I'm sure he'll want to see you. Ella, they've arrested you too? Oh, no. I'm a witness. A witness? Yes. She's here to testify against your father. But it isn't possible. What do you have against father? What did he ever do to make you think he's a traitor? Don't you remember her court? The night you came home, the fight you had with her Muller, your father took his side against you. But Ella, that was nothing. Hmm? It was only an argument. Well, I... Oh, please, her court. You don't realize what they do to you nowadays. They make you so afraid. You don't know what's right and, and what's wrong. They get you so mixed up and... Good evening, Herr Bach. Good work. Colonel Hale will see you in a few minutes. Wait, please. Come along. We are ready oh, for no, you now. please. I don't want to go. Oh, come oh, along. Don't afraid. be afraid. Nothing will happen to you. Please, Everything will be all right. She's been with us for 15 years. She was like a mother to us. Stranger things than that have happened in our country, Herr Franken. For instance, what you've just done, Colonel Heller will want to congratulate you. A man who out of loyalty to the party turned in his own brother to his death. Please. Oh, but you deserve a great deal of praise. I too would like to congratulate you. I didn't know what I was doing. Wasn't it you who called Colonel Heller about your brother? Yes, but all I meant to do was... I had no idea that Eric... You mean... You mean you didn't know who it was when you phoned? You didn't know your brother was a member of the underground? Of course not. I would have given my life first if I'd only known. It's just possible there are many more things you don't know, Herr Franken. Come with me. Please. Well, there, Doctor. Have you had enough? Perhaps you'll tell us now who are the other members of the underground. How can I tell you if I don't know? You must think we are fools, Dr. Franken. Your own maid has testified that you heard you make disloyal statements that your youngest son, weeks ago, was at the point of denouncing one of your close friends. And yet you asked me to believe you had no knowledge of Eric Franken's activities? My word of, 
Of honor as a former soldier. Sure word of honor. Nothing could possibly interest me less. out of him. Well, you see. You can't beat him anymore. He is wounded, can't you see? You'll kill him. That will come later, have no fear. Now, once and for all, Doctor, are you going to tell us what you know? Or would you rather see your son beaten before your eyes? Speak up. I want the truth. Very well. You've asked me for the truth. I'll tell you. I knew nothing about my son's work in the underground movement. Neither I nor my wife. Absolutely nothing. But if he did work to free our country from men as vile as you and your kind, then I'm glad of it. And I thank God that I haven't the strength and the courage to fight you myself. At least I have a son who has... Oh, dirty swine. Quiet. If you make one gesture, if you say one word, You'll end up in our concentration camp yourself. I don't care. Let them hear me. I'm sick of them. their lies and their beatings. You don't care. Not about avenging your brother, your mother, your father. You don't care about avenging your own dignity as a man. You don't care about any of those things after what you've learned tonight. Of course. Of course. But what can I do? Help us. Help the underground. Help us show to the people the truth. You? Yes. Eric and I have worked in the underground since Hitler came into power. Now that we've lost him, we need someone to replace him. Don't you see? You're in a position to help us, to do more for us than anybody else. What do you mean? How? Make Heller believe, convince him if necessary, that you knew it was Eric when you phoned here tonight. What? Think of what you could do for us then. For you'll be above suspicion if you let them think that you're with them. But how will that help, Eric? There is nothing we can do to help, Eric. He'll die under the axe. Oh, I know it's hard to face, but they'll kill him anyway. And the only one who can give some meaning and purpose to his death is yourself. For if you will let them think that you knew it was Eric, then you can continue his work. You're asking me to let Eric die, thinking I meant to betray him. Yes, you've got to. No, I won't. He's got to know the truth. I won't do it. I'm only asking you to do what Eric himself would insist upon if he knew the circumstances. Court, this is your hour as a man. Will you take it or not? All right. Oh, you are Eric's brother. Come. It won't be easy, but you've got to do it. Please wait here. Good evening, Herr Flatman. I expected you to show up here tonight. Yes. I thought you'd want to see me. Yes, of course. I'm glad you came. Cigarette? No, thank you. Go on, take one. I suppose you know we had to arrest your father, too. Yes, I know. Just a formality, of course. Nothing will happen to him if he's innocent. We simply want to ask him a few questions. Yes, sir. By the way, when did you first learn that your brother is guilty? Tonight. I phoned you as soon as I realized it. Uh -huh. Of course, you knew it was your brother. Yes, sir, of course. Of course. Bring the prisoner Eric Franken in. What is it? 
These papers. Herr Himmler's office wants you to sign them. Wait. Yes, sir. You know, Frank, it seems rather strange that you should live in the same house with your brother and yet never have suspected that he was a member of the underground. How do you explain that? Well, I've only been home a short while. And I wasn't sure until tonight. Uh-huh. I see. You weren't sure? No, sir. And the girl? You still haven't found out anything about her? No, sir. You didn't know I was with the others. Well, I... I... I knew they were lying. I knew you couldn't have done it. You're wrong, Eric. They told you the truth. I didn't know you were there when I phoned. I don't believe it. You... Kurt. I'm sorry for you, Eric, but you knew what you were doing. You're only getting what you deserved. Kurt. Look at me. Give me your hand. No. I've made my choice, and you've made yours. There's nothing more to say. Franken, I was wrong about you. I thought you were lying before. You're upset, naturally. It was a very difficult thing to do, turn in your own brother. I wanted to ask you some more questions, but we'll wait until tomorrow. Maybe you want to go home now. Thank you. Good night. So at last the government can announce that the illegal radio, which spreads seditious lies against the state, has been silenced forever. And that the chief criminal, Eric Franken and his companions, shall pay with their lives for their crimes. And so shall all enemies of the state perish. of the underground. Ah! Eric Franken, Alexander Schumann, Hugo Baumer, for the crime of conspiring against the state, the People's Court has sentenced you to die. Therefore, in accordance with my duties as official prosecutor, I hereby surrender you 
to the executioner, Eric Franken. Citizens of Germany, this is the voice of the illegal radio, the voice of free Germany. Today, three of our truly great comrades are dying. It's in the summer of the yard. Dying for the crime of fighting ignorance, oppression, and brutality. They are killing them in the belief that death will still their voices. But they speak even now through me. You may be assured there will be someone to take my place. Why don't you do something? Why did you fool? No sword has yet been forged that is strong enough to kill a human soul. And what must now be whispered in the dark by a few of us will be shouted from the housetops in the future. Freedom will prevail and peace on earth will reign when this era of medieval darkness will be only a memory. The hope of a new day will survive. Let us show the world that the monstrous policy of our leader is not the policy of the people. Let us cry out. Oh, here. You shall not crucify 70 million yes, Germans. Yes. And if my voice never stops, there's another one. Find it. You may be assured there will be someone to take my place. And to Eric Franken we say, what stronger breastplate than a heart untainted? Thrice is he armed that hath his quarrel just, and he but naked, though locked up in steel, whose conscience with injustice is corrupted. Good. This is our fight. To bring light where there is darkness, and to restore...